Hi, this is Ms. Kidman, and in this video, we're going to be discussing how we can make two-way tables as well as analyze the data within or interpret the data. So what is a two-way table? Well, a two-way table is a table that has two sets of data combined. So for example, this table has people's ice cream choices and their pants length. Now, these two things are combined in the sense that I asked someone, what ice cream do you prefer, vanilla chocolate or neither? and ask them what length their pants were. And then we tallied up the totals and figured out what it was. Now it shows me two sets of data, but by combining these two sets of data, I can see whether or not these events are independent and don't affect each other, or if they're dependent and they actually do. I can see that by the way that I look at the numbers that are in the data. Now, just because they seem like they might affect each other doesn't mean that they actually do. That doesn't mean that they cause something to happen, but we can see that there might be a relationship or something that'll help us in predicting what somebody might do. So let's take a look at this first example here. There's a Venn diagram below that shows the results of a survey in which 80 students were asked whether they play a musical instrument and whether they speak a foreign language. Using this Venn diagram, we can complete the two-way table below and then use the two-way table to answer each of the questions. So let's create this two-way table here. So our Venn diagram is a survey of 80 students. In orange here is the number of students that play an instrument. In blue is the number of students that speak a foreign language. Note this area right in the middle. These students are the ones that both speak a foreign language and play an instrument. And these students on the outside are the ones that don't do either. So let's take a second to fill out our frequency table here, or our two-way table. It's called a two-way table because it goes one way this way and one way that way. So let's take a moment to fill that out. So ask, I wanna ask myself, how many students speak a foreign language and play an instrument. Well, that's the section in the middle, which is 16 students. And then I wanna know how many students speak a foreign language, which is my blue circle, but do not play an instrument. That's just the blue circle, no overlap with the orange is 30. So total, we have 46 students that speak a foreign language. Now, how many students play an instrument, but do not speak a foreign language? Well, that's gonna be the orange circle, not including the overlapping part in blue. So that's 25. And then how many students don't do either? So are outside of our two circles? Well, that's nine students. And 25 students plus nine students means that we have 34 students that don't play a musical instrument. Now remember, there were 80 students surveyed, so we know that our total here is going to be 80. And then we ended up getting 39 students that don't play an instrument and 41 students that do play an instrument. And so this two-way table tells us that relationship between playing an instrument and speaking a foreign language. Now, we can use this two-way table to kind of interpret data. We can see that students that, we can kind of look and say, okay, do more people play an instrument or not play an instrument? Well, it looks like there's this significant relationship. People either do one or the other, but not a lot of people do both or neither. So you have 30 out of your 46 speak a language, but don't play an instrument, and 25 out of your 34 um, don't play, don't speak a foreign language, but do play an instrument. And so it's interesting to see that relationship there. So let's answer these probability questions down below based on our tables up above. So what's the probability that a student plays an instrument? Well, how many students play an instrument? 41 out of 80. Great. What's the probability a student speaks a foreign language? Well, the number that speak a foreign language is this 46 out of our total 80. What is the probability that someone plays an instrument and speaks a foreign language? Well, the probability that they play an instrument and speaks a foreign language, remember before how we'd have to take the probability that they play an instrument and multiply it by the probability that they speak a foreign language? Well, instead of doing that, we can actually just look at our table here and count how many people do that. And in this case, there are 16 out of our 80 students that do both. And that's the beautiful thing about these two-way tables is we have to do less calculations and more analyzing the data. What's the probability that a student does not play an instrument and does not speak a foreign language? Well, that's gonna be in this category right here, which is nine. So we've got nine out of 80. And lastly, what's the probability a student plays an instrument and does not speak a foreign language? So we wanna look, plays an instrument, does not speak foreign language. Well, that's going to be 25 out of our 80. Now, when we're talking about these frequency tables, they have some special characteristics and some terminology that we use. Now, very first, we have something called a joint relative frequency. 
we're going to abbreviate it by calling it a JRF throughout the rest of this slide. So joint relative frequency is the frequency of something occurring over the total. So let's take a look at this two-way table that we have down below. We want to change it into a frequency table. So a frequency table, instead of having data where we have the number of people that did something over a total number, we look at it in, set, in the sense of how, like a frequency of it. So joint relative frequency is where we take the number of people or the frequency of it and divide it by our total. So in this case, we have baseball, basketball, football, and then we have a total, right? That's what our table looks like there. I'm gonna just create a new one here. And then we have male, we have female, and we have our total. Okay, so my table looks similar. If I wanted to make one that was not a two-way table, but a frequency table, I would wanna find the joint relative frequency. Now that's the frequency over the total. So I'm gonna take 13 over 100, and that would be 0.13. Now basketball would be 0.15, football would be 0 0.20. Um, the number of females that, play, that prefer baseball would be 0 0.23, 0 0.16, 0 0.13. And those are joint relative frequencies. So our frequencies are these ones in gray here. And the joint relative frequencies is when we change those to be that number divided by our total. So it's a frequency that's easier to compare because it's hard to say like, is 13 more than this if we're just looking at those frequencies. Next is the marginal relative frequency. So what we do there is we take those frequencies and we add them up for the row or column. So in this case, let's add up how many males we have for our marginal frequency. So pulling out a calculator, we can just add up as we go across the lines. We've got 0.13 plus 0.15 plus 0.20, and we end up getting 0.48. So again, in blue here is our marginal relative frequency, and that's going to be those ones on the outside that relate those frequencies together. And so then we have 0.23 plus 0.16 plus 0.13, and that would be a 0.52. And then we can add these ones up. Point, then we want to add up our columns. So 0.13 plus 0.23 is 0.36. Um, as we add these ones up, we get 0.31. As we add these ones up, we get 0.33. Fantastic. Now our total should be um, one. And the reason why is because these are relative frequencies. So if we do 0.48 plus 0.52, we get one. If we do 0.36 plus 0.31 plus 0.33, we get one. If we add up all of our joint relative frequencies, they should also equal one. The reason why is because we're comparing it to a total. So we're saying out of one, this is the, prob this is the probability of us getting this, a point a 13% chance of this, 15% chance of this, 20% chance of this, a 48% chance that they'll be male things like that. Now, the last thing that this slide talks about is something called a conditional relative frequency. So a conditional relative frequency is conditional on a certain area. So how we calculate that is we actually take our joint relative frequency, so one of our boxes here, and we divide it by our marginal relative frequency. And the reason why we do that is because we're conditioning what we're looking at. So remember in the last video where we looked at something and we said, we're going to condition it. So instead of looking at the whole set of data, I only care about the males or I only care about the females or I only care about the baseball or the basketball or the football, not everyone, just this one part of my table. Now the conditional probability tells us that we're going to look at just that part, just like our conditional relative frequency does. We're only going to look at this column and then to find that we're going to take whatever the joint relative frequency is and divide it by our marginal one. And that will give us what that probability is. Now we can do that with our table here. Our joint relative, our joint, our frequencies inside are right here. And I can still find my calculations by doing 13 divided by 36, just like I can do 0.13 divided by 0.36. They are the same, but instead of comparing them as with our totals being 100, this turned out pretty. But sometimes if our total is like 131 people, it's nice to be able to compare those probabilities and saying 13% of people do this, 15% of people do this, 2% of people said this. It's nice to be able to see them in a more relative way of they're out of 100% or out of one rather than out of whatever that total number is from our sample. So using this idea of frequency tables, we can analyze data. So let's take a look at this next example here. 
So you randomly survey students about whether or not they're in favor of planning a, a community garden at school. Of 96 boys surveyed, 61 are in favor. Of 88 girls surveyed, 17 are against. Organize the results in a two-week table and then find and interpret the marginal frequencies. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna interpret this thing. So we have two things. We have boys and we have girls. We have people in favor of the garden and people against getting a community garden. So there were 96 boys surveyed, so total of 96. 61 of them were in favor, so 61. There were 88 girls surveyed, and 17 were against. Now, let's figure out the rest of this table. Well, if I have 96 people total and 61 of them voted yes, then that means 35 of the boys voted no. And if I had 88 girls total and 17 of them voted against, that means 71 voted in favor. And then we can add up these numbers here to figure out how many total people voted in favor. So 61 plus 71 is 132 people voted in favor, and 35 plus 17 is 52 people voted against. And total, we had 184 people. Now, this is our what we're looking at here. If we're talking about our marginal frequencies, what we wanna look at here is what is the relationship between each thing? And so of the total people, 96 out of 184 of them were about 52% were male and 48% were female. And we can find that marginalized frequency if we wanted to do 61 divided by 184, 35 divided by 184 and add it together. We also can just do 96 divided by our total. It's kind of up to you. So 96 divided by the 84. Our other, mar our other marginal frequencies are gonna be this 132 out of 184 which is 71 and 52 out of that 184 is 0.28. So what does this mean? What are these numbers that we have in our table here? Well, what this is telling us is we had about 52% of the people voted that were male and 48% female. So they were pretty even there. So this is pretty even. This is good for a study. We also found that 71% of them agreed in favor and 28% voted against. So what does this data mean? Well, that means that people want a community garden and that the school should implement a community garden because 70% of the people want it. Now we can also ask more questions to ourselves of do boys want it more or girls? And the way we can look at that is we can look at this information and actually look at those marginal or those joint relative um, frequencies. And so if we look at the joint relative frequency of boys, we've got 61 out of 96. So you've got about 0.63 of the boys voted in favor and 71 out of 88 girls voted in favor, which is 0.81. So 80% of the girls voted in favor and 63% of the boys voted in favor. So overall, we want a garden, but the girls want it more than the boys do. And so this is a way that we can interpret what these frequencies mean or what this data says is by finding those relative frequencies we can easily compare numbers even though they might not have the same row or column totals or if the overall total of the problem or of our sample is a kind of a weird number that's hard to interpret and that's the beauty of using these so as you learn more about frequency tables and two-way tables they are so wonderful because it's a great way to compare two sets of data and to look at their relationship we can also see, so for example, with this one, we can see that people prefer, people want a garden. We also can see that girls want a garden more than boys. But because overall we saw that people want a garden and it wasn't that boys or girls wanted it more than the other, so much more that like all the boys said no and all the girls said yes, we can see that these are kind of independent, that your gender doesn't really matter, even though girls prefer it more. If you, were ha if you had to ask, you would guess that a girl would say yes. But we can use this data in our table to really interpret and understand what does this mean and predict what would happen in the future and what would make people happiest. And that's what we want to do as statisticians and mathematicians is understand the world so that we can make people happier. Um, feel free to check out the next video in which we discuss joint and disjoint probabilities.